Hey guys, it's Max. We're back with Battle Code 2016. In this episode, we'll write a player to play on those maps we made in the last episode. If I make any mistakes in writing this out, then I'll just restart the recording. So if I look infallible, that's why. And uh, then again, if I make mistakes, don't hold it against me. Okay, so the first step is we're going to go literally from scratch here. Uh, we'll make a new package in the folder that contains example funks player in our install directory and I'm going to call it lecture player one I've always been fantastic at naming as you can see we'll make a new file I'm going to call it robot player .java. I always call it robot player .java, your main file here that's the one that the battle code game looks for when it looks for your code at the top put package and then the name of the package that this file is in public class robot player open bracket uh, that's a curly bracket if you can't see it and then we'll do public static void run and run takes an argument robot controller and we'll just give that a name RC okay so right off the bat Eclipse is helping us out it gives us a red underline if I mouse over that it tells me what the problem is it says that it cannot be resolved to a type so I select import and it'll import battlecode.common.robotcontroller but in fact we want everything under battlecode.common so we'll put a little asterisk there and that'll get us all of the things that we need to run our player um, those are the command sets that are available it's like imagine you're playing Starcraft it's like um, attack move you know hold position all those commands are, are located in here so anyway we're gonna get right into it here so let's say that all we want to do in life is move to the right maybe we're the red team let's just do that something simple RC dot move um, it takes a direction so I'm just gonna give it a constant direction dot east we use uh, northeast south and west instead of right and left um, I guess it takes care of the ambiguity of well is it right or left relative to where you're moving or relative to the screen orientation so it says here unhandled exception type if I can't move to the right say there's another robot in the way then this will throw exception that means it'll sort of break out of this part of the code it won't move and then it needs to go somewhere else so I'm gonna go to surround with try catch and that means that it's gonna try to run this piece of code and it will catch any problems with this and then if there's a problem then it'll run this piece of code okay um, another uh, so I need to make sure that this keeps going that it repeats over and over again because the robot runs this code on turn one and if this method exits, if it, it, it goes sequentially, line by line, top down to the bottom, if this method exits, then the robot will be destroyed. So I'll put at the top while true and an open curly bracket and a closed curly bracket. Holding the shift key, I'll select all these lines and with control I, I'll fix the indentation. So now it'll just keep doing this over and over again. Now in reality, it's gonna run into problems and I'm just gonna anticipate those problems right now. So it can't move under two conditions that we have to check. We have to check if RC dot is core ready. And we also need to check if there's something in the way. So we'll check if RC dot can move in direction dot east. And only if these conditions are satisfied will it move in this direction. Okay? Now, here's another thing. We want the team on the left to move to the right, and we want the team on the right to move to the left. How are we going to do that? In this case, I would like to define a variable at the beginning. So I'm going to call it static moving direction, and its type is direction. So there, that's how we're declaring that there's a variable here and we're gonna set it equal to direction dot east so by default it's east but there's a chance that it'll be west so if RC dot get team equals team dot B so if I'm team B then 
moving direction equals direction dot west. Here I didn't use curly braces. If you've only got one line following the if line, then you don't need the curly brackets like I have here and here. Okay, so then in that case, over here we're not going to use east. We're going to use whatever the moving direction is. This is pretty useful. Okay, so we, now it's all consistent everywhere. Let's save this with Control S and then run it with ant run and I can either do that here with BC16 run or I can do that here with ant run in the command line. And what we're going to try to look for is to see if these robots on one team are moving one way and the other team are moving the other way. And if I got it backwards I'll just reverse east and west here and we're going to pretend like it never happened. Once we've got them moving toward one another then we can start getting the uh, getting the attacks going. Still compiling. And there it is. So we've got our player selected, Lecture Player 1, for both teams, and we're going to be playing on the map Four Way Mayhem. So here we go, starting the map. Okay, and look at that, they move toward one another. Now, I guess in a sense, it's not too good because the uh, zombie players are running their own AI. It's not the AI that I wrote. And so they absolutely wreck all of our dudes. Um, so we get wrecked by the zombies, but to watch it again, look at that. We move in, we move together, and, uh, and everybody's fun and happy. One question I have is what happened to the turrets? I believe there were turrets here, and oh, they're still there. They just get destroyed. Okay, good. So the turrets, as you note, cannot move, and that's because they're all positioned as turrets. So I think we want we'll have to write some specific code for them. Okay, well, I think that's already a long enough video. In the next video we'll do attacking and a little bit smarter movement. Okay? See you then.